get the show on the road. Um, so I just want to start off by saying I'm Donald Flanagan and I'm delighted to be joined with uh, David Talbot tonight uh, for a discussion, our presentation and discussion on herbicides and weed control in nursery stock, containerized nursery stock, field stock, and I think we're going to look a little bit at cup foliage as well. And uh, David is joining us from, he's working with ADAS in the UK and he's joining us from Worcestershire, I think. Yes, that's and, right. yeah. and we've uh, my good colleague Dan and Kerry, Andy Welton, our cup foliage specialist, is joining us as well. So we've got a an interesting topic. I know it's really one of the key things that growers are always asking about is weed control, and I suppose it's the times when it gets away from you that it's it's of greatest concern and hardest to pull back. So David's going to give us a run through a very I suppose uh, yeah, quite a broad range of different topics. Before we start off, um, I'm going to say thanks for taking the time to preparing um, the, the slides this evening and for joining us. And thank all our attendees as well. We have 26 people online there. I've started a poll and there's a good few people have voted there. I'm going to leave that open for another minute and we'll just gauge um, who's in the audience and what their their needs are or what what their experience is. So if anybody else wants to uh, vote there, we can. I suppose the the other little bit of housekeeping is the event. The webinar is being recorded and will be up on the Chagask website and on our YouTube channel in the next couple of days. And um, hopefully we will probably have this wrapped up in about an hour or maybe a little bit less. Um, so let's see, so we'll, we'll close the poll there and we'll see what we have. So share results. So if you want, you can see them now. Are they on your screen? Mm -hmm. Great, okay. So uh, which of the following are, um, are you growing? So we've got a, a mixture, a fair mixture, uh, hedging, cup foliage, semi-mature, containerized nursery stock leading there with just 40%. Um, cup flowers, um, others, and then a few people not growing at all. Uh, which weeds do you find most challenging to control? And it's looking fairly, oh, it leans more towards annual weeds. Okay. And lastly then, are you using alternatives? So we've got um, <coughs> rotation, mechanical weed control, um, barriers and others. So barriers and mulches are getting and nearly 90% between the two. So that's a, quite a strong um, vote in favor of them as well being combined with <laughs> herbicides. So that's a, an interesting one to start out on. Um, we'll hand over to you, David, and you can start your, your presentation. You were saying that you, you might be happy to get questions coming in on the Q&A <laughs> during this. Andy's going to keep an eye on that as well as myself, and we're going to then wrap up at the end and have a, a discussion as well so um is that right david you're happy happy to go ahead like that yes certainly. that's great great okay well i'll hand over to you and you can start sharing your screen okay good evening everyone uh, delighted to be joining you this evening um, let me just get the document we need up we control so the problem um on a worldwide scale we grapple with thirty thousand species of weeds now thankfully you won't be trying to cope with that many. Um, the average crop competes with 10 or 15 species. Use, so population growth, maybe more land will be required for food production in the future. <coughs> so it's pressure on productive land. We need to be getting the most from the land we're growing ornamentals on, that's for sure. Land degradation is a problem in many areas. Um, so there's interest in reduced tillage and this can give more weed control challenges. Some of the soils we're growing on ornamentals on are light in nature um, and can be prone to erosion. And we need to be producing these sorts of crops on those sorts of soils because it facilitates winter lifting when it's typically wet. Um, David, sorry, your sound is dropping in a little dropping in and out a little bit just if there's a microphone you can give it a, a little gentle wiggle or something okay is that better sounds fine yeah good right yeah on we go 
So agrochemicals, we've seen a massive decrease in the number of agrochemical companies through mergers and acquisitions. Um, costs associated with developing new active ingredients are extremely high. Um, and global herbicide active ingredient launches have continued on a downward trend for 15 years or so now. Um, over 60% of existing herbicide modes of action have some levels of resistance and herbicide resistant weeds are reported in 86 crops in a total of 66 countries. So just while we're talking about resistance, in case people aren't aware, herbicides are classified by an organisation called the Herbicide Resistance Action Committee and that's an international organisation and its purpose is to avoid resistance occurring and prolong the life of, of herbicides we've got because if we use them irresponsibly we may get resistance so not using something from the same group all the time is a good thing um, and we know weeds that are common on nurseries such as groundsel have developed resistance to herbicides that we've we've lost so it is something to be aware of so Here's a bit of an outline of what we're going to cover this evening, um, looking at weed control in tree and rose production, touching on general field grown nursery stock, seed beds, field grown herbaceous and container production. So contact herbicides. Um, Shikara isn't really a contact herbicide, it's a residual herbicide, but I just put this in because I want to refer to it because people often tank mix it with glyphosate in, for use in non-cropped areas. Um, we know that glyphosate isn't very good on willow herb. They tend to sort of go a bit purple in the cover. But tank mixing glyphosate with shikara really does pep it up and give a good kill of such weed. It also improves its control of perennial nettle. So that's something that may be of interest. Just a word of warning though, where you're using the product in this way. Shikara is a, a very good residual herbicide that can persist for up to five months. But if you're spraying where you've got a weed canopy of, say, the odd willow herb, everywhere that, where there's a willow herb, even if you're killing it with a mix, that will act as a little umbrella and that soil or gravel beneath it will be protected from the residual herbicide. So once that, that weed's died, it's likely that weeds can be able to recolonize recolonize and re-germinate on that that area particularly on soil <coughs> more quickly so that's something to be aware of so trying to control willow herb in such areas before you put your shikara on is a very good plan um, and spotlight plus can provide good control of willow herb um, it, it's good to put a wetter in with it to get get best results and try and get it at the tight rosette stage in the winter before it starts to move away. And using it on a sunny day can also speed up its, its activity. Other contact herbicides have limitations too. So um, a newer product, Cowton Gold, which is pelagonic acid, um, is effective against smaller weeds, but it has quite a few things that, that can prevent it working properly. So um, from memory, it needs to be above 15 degrees. Weeds need to be actively growing, so not in drought conditions, not too cold. Um, it doesn't need to be too dry. So there, there are considerations to get good results from this product and good results are, are achievable, but I have seen it fail where people haven't read the label properly and haven't really thought about the conditions they're applying that product in so that's something to be aware of <coughs> now you'll see the pay photo up at the top got some volunteer potatoes in you might think that's a bit of a strange photo when we're talking about ornamentals um, but there's method in the madness um, they are often a problem on irrigated land that uh, some crops are grown on so Potatoes often feature in irrigated land rotations and volunteers can persist for a number of years. So they present a weed in, in our crops that we're growing on that land. So a couple of options for control. Um, Starane XL should do a good job. It's, it's a mixture of two actives. We have slightly different products over here in the UK, um, but we've got a product called Styrane, which uh, 
which is just the one active of the two in that mixture and it gives us good control of volunteer potatoes. Dow Shield's another option, but you do have to avoid drift or contact onto the crop and, and styrene is the same. It's really for a careful spot treatment um, in appropriate conditions, so not when it's windy. So herbicides for grass weeds, you're very lucky in Ireland to still be able to use curb flow in ornamentals. Sadly, we can't in the UK. A good product for use in the winter when conditions are cool. Um, again, read the product label carefully. Um, it should give guidance, but at low temperatures, it, it works best and it's a product that breaks down quickly at higher temperatures. So you need to optimize its use in the winter. Glyphosate's another good option for grass weeds, but I'm sure most of you have heard there's a question mark over that and uh, how long we'll have it for, we don't know, but let's hope we don't lose it. Um, Cap and gold's another option. Generally, a point I should have made on the last slide, this is generally on smaller weeds, the smaller the better, really. And um, another option for, for grass control is Stratos Ultra there. <coughs> Okay, so moving on to residual herbicides for use in crops. Um, so some of the results I'm talking about this evening are from trials um, funded by HDB Horticulture, so they've generated some good results for industry over the years. And uh, this was on some dormant tree stocks, so we had some four species um, in the trial, and uh, they were Malus, Prunus, Pyrus and Sorbus. And uh, these, are, these were herbicides we applied in a tank mix. Um, Donald tells me you're just getting sunfire in Ireland as a product, but it's not easily available. Now, you may recall a product called Artist that could be used a few years ago in Ireland, I gather. Um, and now, that was actually a mixture of the two actives contained in Sencrex Flow and Sunfire. So by, by using Sencrex Flow and Sunfire, we're sort of recreating artists that we used to be able to use in this tank mixture. But you'll see there's four, four herbicides in the tank mixture there, and that, that gave us good control of residual control of weeds. Um, when you're with residual herbicides, you want them to go onto clean soil. I'm sure people are aware of that because um, they generally don't kill weeds that are present. Some kill very small seedlings, but um, the cleaner the better to get those products on. And just on that note, important nursery hygiene, whether you're a field grower or a container grower, keeping surrounding areas clean of weeds like ground soil, non-cropped areas, edges of beds, etc., to prevent, prevent those seeds blowing in and keep the weed pressure down, that all helps massively. Um, you could add dual gold efficacy into that mix above, um, and that could Im well improve the weed control further. Now we tried some other mixes as well. Um, we also looked at that mix with a merger in it, um, so it didn't have the sunfire, it had the merger instead, and that gave even better con weed control, resulting in 1.7% weed control after 12 weeks. The emerger can create some quite dramatic yellowing effects on the crop, particularly on the sorbus, um, but it's a transient effect and they've got time to grow away from it, particularly in field production. And by 12 weeks none of, after treatment, none of that yellowing was considered a problem really. And it didn't, it didn't really affect the vigour, it just looked a bit unsightly, but again in the field, if it gives us the weed control and saves us money, and doesn't affect the ultimate growth, does it really matter? Um, another one we used was metabromuron there. Um, at high rates and you can use, so at the rates you can use, your weed control might not be quite so good, but at 0.3%, it was, it was a very good tank mixture that, that uh, was very pleasing. So in these sorts of situations where you're getting that level of weed control after 12 weeks, it would be then going in with your, your spot treatments with a knapsack, um, probably just spot treating those little weeds. You could do that before 12 weeks. And, and I'm sure these residual herbicides could be 
you could get more than 12 weeks out of them if that approach was adopted. Um, just another point with residual herbicides, you want to avoid any walking on the treated ground of staff and um, driving over it as well, because that will all break the seal. They work by sort of creating a barrier type seal in, in the soil and weeds die as they come through that seal. Eva, can I just ask a question there while you're on, you're on yeah. uh, that mix, uh, fairly, fairly big mix of stuff. Uh, you mentioned the species that it was trialed on. Is there any reason why some of those or all of that couldn't be used on some of the evergreen species or has there been any work done on looking at the effect of those herbicides on evergreen species? Um, but not in that mixture. Um, Sencrex has been looked at on some evergreen species and as a dormant treatment and uh, it looks encouraging but um, the general sort of consensus is to try on a small area with a new herbicide prior to widespread treatment because even though we tried it on sort of malus, malus and prunus for instance different cultivars and varieties can react slightly differently so um, that's the sort of best approach really. Okay. okay. So other residual herbicides that were put on post heading back for dormant tree stocks were Flexor 500 tank mixed with Butsan S, um, put on post budding and when the foliage had hardened sort of July time and you might get a bit of damage to a tips but uh, nothing that would cause any damage that's detrimental to the crop. Um, another point with herbs, residual herbicides I should have mentioned on the previous slide, they're best applied to moist soils, um, so they can even be applied in light rain. So if, if you are in a dry spell and you've got the ability to irrigate, particularly a crop that's planted now at a cold store, irrigate to get a bit of moisture in the crop into the soil, that, that will give you better results um, and also putting treatments on in the growing season in light rain or, or irrigating them off they reduce the risk of damage further as well so so then <coughs> post heading back for trees when they were dormant the following sort of february the same mix went on um, and again we got very good weed control um, at 2.8 percent after 12 weeks there and because most of the products we were using have a rate per year because you're in a different calendar year it's okay to use them again um, slightly different rates of one or two so the emerger went on at 1.5 liters a hectare here and we got 2.5 percent weed cover um, and Syncrex, Stomp and Venzar with the Proman, which is Metaburon, Metabromuron, <coughs> um, again at slightly higher rates and on your label, resulted in 0.75% weed cover. But uh, even using the rates on your label, I, I don't expect the weed control would be far away from, from that figure there. And bearing in mind this is a crop going into its second year, they were very pleasing results. So. David, what kind of water rates were being used in the application of those mixes? Um, I think they were about a thousand litres a hectare. Um, but the general sort of ad advice is to reduce your water volume because everything becomes more efficient and, and we don't need to use high water volumes. So, right. Um, That's a lot of water. Yeah, I've got growers using sort of rates around 400 litres a hectare and they're getting good results, so. Right. So moving on into weed control, field grown roses. Um, so dormant stocks are first stage of planting. So we've got Syncrex flow featuring here. We're using lower rates for roses um, than uh, and we did on the trees. We got the figures there are for one liter a hectare. The maximum rate over here is 1.15 liters a hectare, and and we think I think 
the rates the same for you over in Ireland. Um, but uh, we even pushed the rate up in a bit higher than one litre and, and didn't find any result dam damaging results. So we know Sencrex can move in the soil profile. So it's a herbicide we've only had access to for a few years over here. So we're, we're going a bit cautiously with it on some crops such as roses, but an approach the growers I work with have adopted that works seems to work well for growers is to to start at a rate that we think may be safe and then so um so for on for instance on on row stocks we're using Syncrex flow at 0.73 litres a hectare initially <clears throat> and then odd it up a bit every year because ideally growers would carry out their own trials at a rate they might like to use but in practically few growers get round to this or, or seem to be able to get the time to do this. So an approach some people have adopted is just odging the rate up by sort of 10% a year and they're not going to get big damage, big levels of damage by doing that. And if they get to a point where they're starting to get a bit, bit too much damage that they feel it's not acceptable for their crop, they can revert back to the rate they were using the previous year. So it's just, just a thought that might be useful for people. Um, also Stomp Aqua, um, Sunfire, which again we said was fairly new for yourselves in Ireland. Um, it's good on grasses, so we're good to have in the mix. A good old Venzar 500 SC, which is Lenasil. Um, also <coughs> Jewel Gold or Afikika could be considered um, to add to the mix. Um, we can only use it in the summer over here, so we're a bit different. So I don't have experience of using it at that time of year, but it, you could try it on a small area and see, see how it performs with those others. Uh, post budding, you've got Flexdoor 500 and Butsan S, sort of standards really, that time of year. Uh, David, just one comment before you move on there on Jewel Gold. Um, we, we've been using a little bit of Jewel Gold in some of the outdoor cut foliage crops and we added into mixes where, you know, there is a willow, maybe a known willow herb issue because we find that, well, it's stated on the label, it is one of those weeds that is susceptible to Jewel Gold. And I suppose, yeah, you have to mix and match these, these um, herbicides in order to cover out most of the weed issues you'll 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 encounter. Any comment on that? Yeah, that's the approach we're taking here. I mean, some of these tank mixes are, have got a number of products in, um, and and more than perhaps people used in the past. But that's often because the rates are more constrained than they were years yeah. ago. So so for instance, with Venzar over here, we can only use a very low rate compared to the rate that we were using a few years ago and the rates we're using now we think only persist for a month so we need it, it as part of that tank mix um yeah and and it, it, again with that willow herb if you can take it out before you get your residuals on or even if your goal is <coughs> giving you some control of it, it it's a better thing because um you'll get that good soil coverage and that residual will persist on the soil for longer. So um, depending on the crop, if it's, a, if it's a rosaceous crop, I wouldn't go near it with life stakes. It can be damaging, um, yeah. very persistent. Um, but if it's not, you might consider that as a careful sort of application through a hooded sprayer, depending on the crop, a spot treatment. Um, but if it's willow herb glyphosate, it's not going to be the best. So probably shark and the wetter is uh, is your best treatment to, to get that willow herb taken before you get your residuals on. Yeah, which in our case is Spotlight Plus is your... Yes, example. sorry, yes. Yeah. Um, drifting back into UK speak. Yeah. One, one other, before you do move on, one other residual that we do have, um, we have approval for here is Defy. And I know in... Certainly, and if we showed a picture of potatoes, but certainly on the veg side of the potato side of the house, a very common mix is Syncorex and Defy um, for residual control because it covers off mostly most of those annual weeds and, and is quite persistent. But that's where Syncorex is possibly used at a much higher rate. And I think Defy's in there at three or four litres. 
have you used Defy at all in mixes in any of the work that's been done? Yes, in containers, um, but not in, in open ground. Um, okay. for, and, that's, and that's because the restriction we've got over here, it's, it's only pre-emergence. Um, and we were using it to try and support a, an EAMU application um, if it looked promising. Um, okay. 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 Crop safety level number of species being assessed in HGB clinical trials. And so, it's not to affect all that, bring grass control and poor work control to mix and control and residual control, not control of existing weeds. Um, also, use NS is an option, um, registered to every year, so you need to make sure you're not overdoing some concerning the regulations and rules. <coughs> so, we have looked at five, as I said a moment ago, um, on, on the treatment, and that will take next to Venza, on the and possible results, and generally seeing safe on those species and we'll see what it's a bit of a again. And that's, we don't think, so we have the other herbicides using the in that group, and quite a few of the others in other groups, and that's a useful one to get into programs, because it brings changes in the interest and still not in the equations. So that's another consideration. Yeah, I mean, if we only need one of the active in, and it seems very frustrating for us, maybe think a couple of years ago, a few years ago, you could have a lot of these rules that are really relative to the weeds, so in distance to a few years old, we have left. So it's in your interest to use them in the restriction on the label. And it's different to Canada in process to bring those changes. Because weeds are around on the short life cycle, we know from past years they have the ability to develop resistance, and they will use the size of responsibility for the and back off these classic sample in cereals. It's a real change for growers and it does resistance. So we should watch it. So, um, we can try and see the density in the field. We've got various options here. Um, I'll start backward again. Um, we're going to size, and it needs to be generally mixed with other things. If possible, it's in the spectrum, there are perhaps in the weed spectrum, spectrum that allows weeds to come through. So, we've got CITAR there, which is the electrical environment, and quick opportunity to do it. It's again, not the electrical of the crop, but it looks awful. Um, it doesn't affect growth, it's just got a low number of weeks, um, and uh, it doesn't affect the feeder of things. So, uh, it's an option, and just like, that's what we'll do with the computer to be controlled, keep those handy, and other. We can build up. Okay, there we go, we're going to be wearing a set in our hands. Yes, that's what we're going to do for our first time. Yeah, yeah. David, no one left to pull the load, and see how you're under a bit of a curve. It's 20, and that's not cool, because it's not cool, because it's straight to the sub-aqua, and I think there was work done by Kali a number of years ago, because it's visualized on the other report, which is good, good success. Yeah, 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 it's good, because it's nature, but I'm going to make a hand messing, so we say, we're saying activists, it's not, I won't keep, if you use an activity, you won't be able to do anything on, or you have to scale the rate to take time to ask. Yeah, because I think you can use it, 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 it tries to numbers, um, it tries to um, beat up flow, and then I found which is good for small weed seedlings, and you can get some material, and then it grows away from it, and, and uh, depending on the product and the label, you can apply to three applications, again, we prefer to label, just check that, there are very four nations, and they found the pre-demands. Yeah, because I'm actually, um, I'm just wondering whether, is, is the weed seed issue, um, as a result of the, the test that's been developed there, because we think that it could be a good thing to result from the residual herbicides, um, and maybe, maybe that's factually considered, and in, in, in the region. Yeah, totally agree, because we've got a property seed bed, or property soil, that's the producer herbicide, and we've seen some products around the property seed bed, and we've seen some products around the property seed bed, and we've seen some products around the property seed bed, and we've seen some products around the property seed bed, and we've seen some products around the property seed bed, and we've seen some products around the property seed bed, so, it's another aspect of the production, it's just being done production. And mostly the control and we've got the almost taking last herbicide. Well, it's not covered by solid strains, it doesn't have a number. And it's a physical project, which is the work of the physical moss, then worse. And uh, again, if you want like, like some more of these more natural type products, you need to read the label carefully and, and do it by the way. So, I think it's early in the morning, that one needs to be applied because it needs to be humidity. And the first way for vegetables and that. Another one, um, which is commodity substance that we can use, is uh, so high on the top of the map. Picture that, put it in one of the below, it's treated with certain white arms at quite a rate, 120 grams a day. And if you think it's all monster cases left in the sheds and it's a way to apply products, so it's a simple process. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a nice run, you can see how much that's actually the application, but it seems to exist for yeah, it's a different product to the ones we used a few years ago. Um, yeah, and so, with the regulations, not massive options, um, just on the same page, and lower range of benzyl fiber and the lens is lower than we had a few years ago, and we'll talk about increased seeding. You know, it's easy to be more sensitive to the water that's interacting with the field, so that's just a thing to bear in mind when you use that product in the container. So, the regulations have to be called and the semester floor, which is another option. So, We've been able to use a lot of things that we can use, benzoyl, gold, mesodol mix in winter, um, and then see if it's all for an application in the next year. Um, just to try and give you some questions, you can read anything else there. All the options go into road weeding, um, depending on the site, and, and you've written blocks that say you can either put a lot of sense and chop the measure or whatever. You've got this erosion and this is into more sorting, etc. So, we're able to do cultivation, so they can still use herbicides. If you're on most of the sites, it's a good question. But just to see how well we're working on cultivation, how people then have some weeds coming in their residual programs and they've gone through the interrogation before the residual herbicides are disallowed. So, if you're going to fill the programs, it's all from the last about three months to twelve weeks, before they're disallowed. So, if you do get weed coming in that period, you're more inclined to try and spray them out, um, rather than cultivate we another area here, we get weeding, and we might more features we've got. Okay, so I'm going to talk about and give this a lot of the right there. There are developing weeders that are on the open site, and that can be either handled by the or manufacturing the plates on the process of the ground, that can be used in robots, and one of the most useful, but it's being used in the crop, that's what it is in the crop. 
as well as the formation of complex systems. So it's just a very straightforward data for electrocution and so with the problem of the great and the ability to control the sequence on the dot, what happens and where they were treated, but uh, on the previous system, treated, you've got a complete kill. And I believe that it's a system, so even on a system where if you were quite a system, if you treated every one spot, please treat them to the complete killing for the sequence, because they don't know what the time is, it's a bit of a war pressure, it's more application needs. And then on the tool, we've got the army, we may become more important, go forward in the future, we may continue to more for taps, for years, so we're certainly in Germany, for a green country, and to see their production, to the area of over in Germany. And to take into the field savings, to see the fast amount of energy, and it's expensive, and the power production, and value the crops there, to justify it. So it's done. Um, it's just following the key. And um, interrogating the corruption is not being widely done, so it's at the moment, but uh, it's corruption. Interrogating the corruption is also widely done, um, and it's working. And uh, interrogating the new nodal systems where life saving systems are occurring, so uh, that's another normally grass weeds, that's a problem. Further away from markets, and um, it's just very interesting to show that things can fill the gaps, so you can use loose herbicides, 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 so and still the research on far away with more to get towards application rates where there's a market comes to the market in the future. And since a lot of different countries plus a couple of variety, and they've found a virus that's always lead, and that's a problem chance. It usually gets all killed, and this is a time frame of the interest on this one for a commercial product, so it's not that we like, but it just shows what can be done to increase the manifest in the future. I think we can always do a simple control. So it's a general sort of message we haven't got, this is still what it's these days, and we're losing the fact that it's quite quick, and we're making one of these. Um, but 
depending on the application, simple to look at NZAR, perhaps a low rate on the on Rudy cuttings and I know flexible can be used on some Rudy cuttings, but the difficulty these days is if you've used it on a stage, um, and it's one the crop, you're probably not getting your best bang for your buck there and you can't use it again. So, um, yeah. Uh, we had a few questions there coming into the table. If you did find any questions, email or with a chance, um, you can send them on. So, the first one there was uh, why is curb not allowed? Is it likely to be taken out of use in Ireland? We haven't heard anything about the interactive tool. Why it's um, lost it's, its approval in the UK? Um, it, it just fell, I think, when it was put forward for an EAMU. So, when we started this confirmation procedure, which was a, a system where we could use any crop protection product at, at your own risk, um, these got converted to, to solars, first of all, and then to a specific off label for approval. There's many protections for authorization for modern use. Um, <laughs> As part of that process, they get assessed for um, a number of things such as safety to, to operators and exposure, and, and that's often where they fall down. And I'm not being sure what you get through, um, but it's one we haven't been able to use for a few years. And um, not to say that may happen in Ireland, you might, if it's on label, you should be okay. Yeah, so um, on the grass slide, forgive me because it's a product, and it's a menu, one, the bottom bullet point on the grass slide, um, the grass, I think, yeah. yes, is an option that can be used in crop. Yeah. So. But I suppose what, what would be important, I think, to point out is that stratus. Well, from my experience, wouldn't have the same effect on very established grasses, David. It's really yeah. only for yeah, seedling. Yeah, so the curb, curbs are hard act to follow, really. Um, it must be done for someone. Yeah, it's 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 not easy. Um, cows and gold will take seedlings, um, so that's that's an option. But uh, we did have a problem with the under long-term arrangements, but long-term arrangements, and I'm sure the same situation applies in Northern Ireland, and lost just before Christmas, and um, we're still hoping Centurion Max will get uh, EA and Nuke for use. And those we can't use it, and if anyone's not familiar with Centurion Max, it wasn't like. It worked in a very similar way to the old product Aramo, which is tip with proxy, um, which was very good on grasses, taking out Aramo grasses. A quick one over there, if you don't mind, I mean, on products, David, you, you mentioned you've lost Centurion Max, but from your looking at what we have available over here, and you've, you've, you've listed them all there tonight, is there any you guys, you guys there, through your work and experience that, that you think that may be of benefit to us, because we can, we can make our own application for, for support of products if, if, if there's enough data? No, not really. I mean, I'll, I'll never troll through. Um, list and send any comments back to you, but my general impression is Irish growers, um, and presumably those in Southern Ireland, are best to show them in the protection herbicides you've got available to you. So, um, yeah, I mean, if, if there are English growers listening tonight, for instance, I'm sure we'd be quite jealous of some of the products you can still use. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, if we can get our hands on a few of those, yeah, that's how we got six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a, some questions coming in there. What was up there? Um, question there, is there a reason to have to available for the actives in specific crops? Yeah. AHDB levy payers, and it might be available to non levy payers now because there's freedom of information, and that's it's a bit tattered because it's well used, but that's the practical weed control guide for um, nursery crops. It's done in and my colleague John Atwood, who I'm working closely with and lived a lot from and before John retired. And that uh, has, it has had some updates issued since its publication, and has been quite a few changes, but there's still some useful crop safety tables in that document. So, um, yeah, you can get hold of that. I think it's available electronically now, so it's not just a hard copy. Yeah, I think I do it here. It's very good traffic light coding for the susceptibility of the different products. Do we have some other questions there? Um, so you could have a lot of things on the margin of production since the little bit Potentially, yes. Um, I mean, it should, uh, it should leach. Um, but if, if, another thing, little bit, if you can run a dry regime, that will help to reduce its spread um, and, and occurrence. Um, and another thing that often gets overlooked on nurseries is, particularly where they're on top of the um, it leaks in sort of pipe work around a nursery and you get these wet areas that come to pop into the work. So dealing with any of those areas will help. Um, so it's, it's taking out a broader view. Have you seen any benefit of using who is on, um, you know, treated water to remove any of the white pathogens that are in water? And remove the biofilm? Who is on? It used to be called Enesan. Okay, is that one of those silver-based yeah. white products? Um, not I don't know whether that's had much impact on the work term. Not, I can't really comment, to be honest. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, some more questions there. I currently use uh, Miser twice a year. I don't know which piece for probably the last 10 years. It's a very odd. It can't do harm to trees, but not changing the spray every year or so. So, no, Miser. What's the active in that one, do you know? I'm not familiar. What was the species that's been used around? Eucalyptus and the foliage. I mean, once a year, it should be, should be okay. Um, if it might be worth, I don't know the control they're using, but it might be worth using the residuals after you've used that, that glyphosate to kill any weed out and uh, putting something like trying some stink ricks. Um, obviously, you're going to have to there. Try some of the residuals we talked about in, in even the tank mix, in some of the tank mixes there, um, because that should keep, keep it clean. Because the glyphosate will kill everything, but the ground will still be recovered on the water. I think they were alluding there to harming bond possibly on the trees, just looking at the, the comments. Okay. You know, we, we can't stress high enough the importance of being very careful with the use of things like glyphosate products. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to be very careful with it, because if you do get applied in inappropriate conditions or get drift, rosacea species are really susceptible to glyphosate damage, um, and uh, it, it will sort of um, stop it's difficult, if not impossible, to make a marketable crop of something that's being exposed to glyphosate. And, and as a company, um, ADAS, we do. Um, 
patterns of legal work and every year they're illegal cases because they typically people burning off oil seed rigs desk cases and it drifting into typically soft fruit propagators so young raspberry chains etc and the claim values is within the region of a million pounds often because it's, 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 there's no way to pull in the back so it is something the message is something you need to be careful with um i suspect um we are a lot less susceptible to it than uh, religious people but still be careful and apply it in don't apply it in windy conditions etc um and uh, just be aware. I mean, I've got PTO spore here that uh, I got from a nursery nearly a year ago. It got some glyphosate damage, and uh, the symptoms you get some very small leaves and sort of look at it bleached, and uh, it hasn't grown properly. And it's we sent it for testing, and it was confirmed that it uh, could really get to the bottom of it. You think the young plants fly sprayed around some and it drifted through onto the liners, and they wouldn't admit to it, but um, they were a proportion of the crop that was graded out and thrown away because of it. And even so, it won't, it hasn't covered. And the trouble is, with glyphosate, once you get it into the plant, the only way it can leave the plant is if the plant sheds leaves or if you prune it out, it just keeps cycling around. So it's, it's something to be careful. A cautionary tale. Um, just maybe we'll come towards the end. So maybe one last question there in terms of maybe a look to the future and so one of the products that I've done and uh, soil and what is the view in the UK for possible to um, do you see anything new coming to the market? Um, it's it's can be a big gap. Um, it's not any weed control is useful for, but in seed beds it seems to improve bigger where the soil has been treated with plasmid. So um, it's it's a difficult one to replace. Um, I don't see it's, really, um, it's it's something we're going to have to learn to work around, but I'm not quite sure how at this stage. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a it's concerned. Um, I mean, they're these natural and names, um, you know, mulching them with plants to sterilise numbers. I mean, yeah, I guess it would be completely different. Yeah, I mean, they do, they do release a thing called isothiosis, which is technical that basically basically releases in the soil, I understand it, but the key is to sort of macerate and incorporate them very, very quickly to get the results, and, and then it doesn't persist for that long. Um, so uh, it's different, truly. Really. Yeah, life, life doesn't get any easier, sadly, sometimes. Well, maybe we should finish on positive notes, one of the things that's different from some, just to be talking about getting some of the system right, about blowing in soil, washing foliage, and yield irrigation, after washing the stuff, and um, managing the needs in non crop areas, and everyone's eating seeds better than soil, and you're applying herbicides and some seeds, or setting seeds, um, and then spot treatments as well, and you'll run a better new context. It's not really, you can continue to use some of the places, but it's a place. You know, those are really good positive statements, and I think a positive result is actually, we've got a few more herbicides received, and we all be honest, and it seems like, yeah, doing maybe a little more toolbox to use them, and bringing it in place. Yeah. And hopefully, with that, can you know, and so on. David, you want to share your thoughts? If you want to use it, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's great. So we can share anything too. I think that's come up with that answer. So we really appreciate that. So on that note, and for all the attendees who joined today, we're still trying to find people who've stayed with us all the way through. So I think that's brilliant. The information that's there, you know, the time that's into the research is just brilliant. We're going to need more hardcore. So I'm just excited for that. And we look forward to finding the next episode of the season. That's a pleasure, and I hope people find it useful. And good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you